Hey guys, this is Srini and welcome back. And while you're here, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the like button. Go ahead, do that. I'll wait. Okay. And uh, I also hope you guys actually watched my previous video about uh, uh, multi-class semantic segmentation using UNET. And there we actually obtained a trained model. And now let's use the trained model to uh, segment large images by dividing them into smaller patches and putting them together and automate that for multiple images in a 3D volume. If you look at this example, what we are talking about is I have a large image. In fact, I have a large volume and I divided this volume into multiple slices and I took each slice, which is a large image and divided them into smaller patches, 128 by 128, apply this uh, train model, stitch them back together and you know, uh, do the same for the next slice and the next slice and next slice and stack everything together so we end up with a segmented volume, okay? It, it's much easier than it sounds, basically, okay? So let's jump into the code. And uh, again, before looking at the code, just to give you a quick idea of my folder structure. So I have a folder called All Images where I have like about 462 images that make up this volume. My goal is to segment all of these and either save them as individual segmented images or stack them into a 3D uh, TIFF file, okay? And uh, also, uh, just in case you don't remember from the last video, uh, we had images. Each image is 128 by 128 pixels. So my model has been trained on these uh, smaller patches. That's exactly why we need to divide everything into smaller patches. And here is uh, 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 where we left off in the last video, right? I mean, we were looking at some of the segmented images and we realized our model is doing an amazing job, including IOU values of, uh, if I can see IOU, just a second, it's important, uh, including IOU values of, um, on average, we are doing about 80, 85%, but for, Class 1, 90%, class 2, 62%, 96%, and 90%. And class 2, I tried this using random forest or uh, uh, gradient boosting and uh, units and a bunch of techniques. 62 is uh, at least so far as good as it gets. I mean, I could have played with the weights to get this a bit better, but let's accept this model and see how we can actually apply this to larger images. By the way, whatever I'm showing you, this works with your large, for example, if you have a whole slide images, you can do that. If you have remote sensing images, this is uh, uh, definitely applicable, right? So uh, I, most of us deal with large images. So that's exactly why this can be very useful. Okay, so what are we doing here? Uh, first of all, let's go back to our uh, original code. And uh, this is the model. Again, we're not going to touch the model, but the only thing I want to highlight is again, what, uh, you know, the only thing we changed in our unit model is adding the number of classes as four instead of binary and uh, outputting, you know, uh, four classes as uh, the output of my uh, unit. That's it. Okay, just a quick reminder, right? It's not relevant for this, uh, for this tutorial. Okay, typically, what do you do? You're done with your you're done with your uh, uh, training, and then you have like a trained model, right? So the next step is to actually load the trained model. So let's assume we don't have anything. So this is where I would actually start. First of all, the, not even there. I would get the model. Okay, I would get the model and compile it, right? Meaning, I would get the entire model. And once I loaded that, now I have to load the weights. Okay, let's go ahead and load the weights. Okay, so I loaded the weight. I'm all ready to go now. So how do we do this large images? I talked about this a couple of videos again, but it's worth repeating, okay? So uh, I'm using a library called Patchify. You can go ahead and pip install Patchify. Uh, well, that lets you break down your images like patches into patches and also unpatchify, meaning like put them back together. You can also write your own code. Again, I showed that a couple of videos ago how to do that if you really would like to do this, but patchify works great, so why not? Okay, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, I'm just showing you, okay, for one large image, I'm loading that one large image, okay? So let's go ahead and load it. I have my large image. In fact, my large image is in this folder called large images. And here is my large image. The plan is to segment this image. 
okay so that's my large image and now i'm going to apply let's look at the variable explorer my uh it's, it, 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 large image is right there 768 by 768 obviously make sure whatever the size of the image is divisible by whatever the patches you're trying to do otherwise the problem uh, what problem you will run into basically is okay you do 128 by 128 patches but the last patch is 128 by i don't know 100 then it throws an error saying, hey, I don't know what to do. So make sure you crop and you do your pre-processing to make sure that, okay, you can indeed divide your image into patches of whatever size you're defining here, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, patchify this. So I should end up a bunch of patches. Did I not run this? Okay, now let's, I'm importing that and now let's run this. So my patches here should be, uh, now I have six by six by 128 by 128. So 768 divided by 128 is six. So we have 36 images per large image. Okay, and we are going to do that how many times? 462 times, right? My all images, I have 462 images right there. So 462 images times 36 patches. That's how many predictions we are going to do. Don't worry, it should be usually pretty fast. Okay, now uh, I am starting as my predicted patches as an empty list and for i in the patches shape zero, which is, uh, you know, you know what that is, six, and then patch shape one, which is six, go ahead and extract each patch, expand the dimensions, and uh, uh, expand, uh, well, expand the dimensions and normalize, expand it again. Why are we doing all of this? This is exactly what we have done with our training data. So we have to pre-process our images exactly the way we pre-processed our training data, right? So if I go back here, uh, so we expanded the dimensions, we normalized them, we expanded, uh, you know, that's pretty much what we are trying to do here, yeah? To get the input to the same shape. Okay, let's come back and uh, we are normalizing it and then uh, we are predicting it, model.predict on this single patch, okay? And single patch, we are going to do argmax just like we did, you know, with our uh, regular small patches, right? Because the output that it gives you for single patch is just a uh, probability for each class we have to convert that probability for each class into a uh, into a uh, classification right that's exactly what we are trying to do here okay and then once it's done you're all set go ahead and append that single patch to my predicted patches and keep collecting them until you're done with these 36 patches and then we can uh, uh, you know uh, unpatchify so but first let's go ahead and where did, where are we like run these lines of code up to here so you can act, it should be pretty quick actually you see right there it's going like a breeze okay predicted patches dot append right so where is my predicted patches so now i have a list of 36 i need to convert that into numpy array let's go ahead and do that so if i do this you see that my predicted patches i have a list of 36 128 by 128 okay so now we need to unpatchify it but then we need to get that shape back into the original shape so let's go ahead and reshape that now if you look at reshaped i have six by six by 128 by 128 remember our original shape after patchify was six by six by 128 128 that's exactly why i'm doing this reshaping okay now i can go ahead and unpatchify it to the original image shape right large image shape that's what we are doing here unpatchify so now my reconstructed image is 768 by 768. So in summary, large image, break it down into patches. Each patch, process it just like we processed our original training data, predict on it, and get the predictions organized again back into the original shape, put them back together. That's all we did here. Now you can go ahead and have a quick look at this reconstructed image right there, and here is the prediction. That doesn't look that bad, actually. And uh, let's go ahead and look at the histogram of this just to make sure. You see, we have class 0, class 1, class 2, and class 3. All, all of these four classes in my image, okay? So let's uh, go ahead and have a look of this side by side. Here is my input image. I mean, I'm, I'm coloring it in jet, so it's colorful. But here is my input image, and here is the segmented image. Not bad, right? The bright regions are in red. This is in yellow, dark regions in dark blue, and uh, the clay shows up in this nice light um, bluish color. Okay, so now we know how to do this for a single image. Let's automate this in a for loop. That's it. So. 
for the full volume all i'm doing is again exactly the same thing we are going to get the model we are going to compile it and go ahead and get the you know load the weights exactly what we have done except here i am starting a list called segmented images and i'm going to capture all my segmented images into this list into this empty list okay so uh let's do this let's actually remove everything and start with a clean slate i promise not to extend this video any <laughs> no more than three to four minutes okay so let's come back and let's run all of these up to here okay nothing so far and then let's go ahead and get our model so we should actually load our model next step load the weights for the model right until that point it's just a skeleton now i'm adding weights to that model and next segmented images empty list which is what we are going to populate in a minute and uh, i'm defining my path as all images okay so my images are in all images and go through each one of these and uh, pathlib import path why because i want to extract the file name and use that file name to save my segmented images so i can correlate which image belongs to what that's that's what pathlib uh, helps me to do in fact you'll see that here if i go ahead and run these lines you see all the i did not get anything here so for file in all images let's uh, let me let's do a sanity check again okay so does it know where we are where are we in multi-class unit right in multi-class unit sorry about this i just want to make sure and all images underscore tiff so let's run this run this line and do this one more time to make sure it's reading oh sorry i'm not printing it it's doing its job i'm not printing it sorry okay there you go okay so it is reading my files right again always do this sanity check now that i can go ahead and comment this out so it's reading this now i'm going to segment images and then save them with this name in a different folder that's it from here everything else is exactly the same we just saw that i just showed you here you see all of this okay starting with reading the image everything else is exactly what i'm doing here so instead uh, you see my large image is large image i'm reading the file and which file the first one right i mean going through each one of these once you read the file what do you do patchify it once you patchify it what you do go through each patch and then expand the dimensions do all the stuff that you need to do and then after you reconstruct the image right we reconstructed the image here and here we showed the image go ahead and append the image to our empty list here segmented images right there okay at the end of that we should get how many ever images i think 461 or 462 images that many images as part of this as part of this okay so uh, and and the other way to do this is basically okay don't save it into a numpy array but then write it to a folder uh with an extension original name and segmented tiff that's that's i'm leaving this here for you guys okay but let's go ahead and run this 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 will take a while i'll stop this in a minute actually but i want you to see what's what's going on i think i put a um, command print command down here yeah finish segmenting 000, 000 001 002 and this goes on for how long for how many ever images i have 461 i've already done that so don't worry at the end of it what you'll have is uh, segmented images if i go and look at segmented images you see a list of nine because we only did nine images right now let's convert that into a numpy array and if you look at final segmented image i have nine images each 768 by 768 now you can open this image in any uh, uh, software that can handle 3d visualization because these are nine images each 768 by 768 and the one i included in my screenshot originally it's basically a 3d rendering on uh, the appear platform again www.apeer.com they have like 3d visualization annotation tools everything for free so uh, if you want that you can use it and uh, in this case uh, uh, what i've done is basically uh, imported the library called tiff file and i will save the image as a single tiff file so how does that look like uh, segmented images this is the single tiff file and if i open this in image j 
you should see that this image is basically 462 slices, each 768 by 768. And if I change my image brightness and contrast, uh, what do we have? Zero to three, I believe. If we do that, there you go. This is our segmented volume. Let me go ahead and play. It goes through each, uh, it goes through each slice, or I can just move this. There you go. And one thing I would like to show you is, you see right here, you see like a hard cutoff right there. This happens because when we do 128 by 128 uh, and then segment each of these, we are losing some context in some of these images. So you have to look at how you can actually uh, divide this image into patches that overlap, not patches side by side, patches that overlap. And how do you treat the segmentation in the overlap? What do you do with this overlap? Either take an average or do something. So there are certain techniques that got published out there. Uh, go ahead and look that like smooth blending, for example, between these can be one option. But this is a uh, this is a challenge. This is a known uh, problem in general when you do this type of patching. OK, but at least now you know how to uh, how to handle these uh, 3D volumes. I hope again you learned something new. And in the next uh, video, let's actually cover uh, something different. And uh, please keep asking these questions if I have time and bandwidth, I'll go ahead and, uh, well, time and knowledge, I should say, I'll go ahead and create videos like this. So thanks again, please subscribe, please like these videos, thank you.